Hello all, Chris Mallard here, Atheist Extraordinaire, host of the Daily Atheist Morning Show, and currently burning in hell. Oh, don't worry about me, I'm not dead. I'm just down here for the annual Christmas party. I mean, I mean, annual Solstice Awards party. The Dark One, or Lucy as he is affectionately known, is personally handing out the awards. Aaron Ra is getting the award for the most souls brought down by evolution for his African fossil hunt, and Matt Dillahunty has won the Golden Phallus Award for being a dick to the most Christians. Oh wait, it's the Golden Fallacy Award for the confusing the most Christians. Easy mistake to make. To top it off, Seth Andrews has lent his voice to the Gregarian chants this year. It's delightfully hellish. Gotta run. I hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving, if you're into that sort of thing, and I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, a, a happy holidays, happy solstice, and a happy new year. Stay safe, heathens. Party hard. Fornicate. That sort of thing. Well, hello, and welcome to the Daily Atheist Morning Show. It is Monday, September 9th, 2024. How are you doing today? Did you have a wonderful and fantastic weekend? Did you say, say, stay safe and have fun? I did those things. I did a lot of work this weekend. I uh, I don't know if you know this, Um I, I, I'm starting because, you know, I talk so much left-wing policies, you know this, I, I don't want to go into it. Anyway, um, I started a new live stream. It streams Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, and it's all left-wing talk. So we can do left-wing talk and not baggery over there. So um, I'll put a link in the, in the chat, and um, you guys can come check it out, see what you think. Let me know. I, I call it crazy talk. That's, uh, yeah. So I'll give you a little clip of that maybe if I can do that later. I hope you, uh, you all had a good weekend um i tell you though it was busy my vikings won skull vikings way to go um man that was a good game for a vikings fan now if you were a giants fan the first drive the first defensive drive we're okay after that they just kind of weren't there but for a vikings fan it was a great great job you know i was fully prepared to be disappointed <laughs> Um, yes, so I, myself, had a good weekend. The wife, she is a, not. I'm going to say this out loud, okay? The wife is a Seahawks fan. Shh, shh, shh. Don't tell anybody here in the house. <laughs> anyway, the wife's a Seahawks fan. She had a good day, too. They won. So, uh, you know, it was a good, good football weekend here at the house, if you're into the sports ball kind of thing. Um, yes, we did that. Um, I, um... I got a couple things to talk about this morning, atheist-wise. I, you know, I don't know if you guys know this. Um, they had, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the chat. Good morning, folks in the chat. Nice to see you. We're doing the Facebook and um, Twitch and all that again this morning. I'm not. I'm just gonna run them. Seattle can win things. You know. Good morning, Ember. I was just as surprised as you are. <laughs> Um, my wife and I, we've been together for, uh, nine, nine, nine and some change years, you know, and I've always been a Vikings fan. She's always been a, a Seahawks fan. One of our first few years together, our teams came together in the, in the playoffs and the Vikings lost by a field goal at the end. Cause some guy, Blair Walsh, damn you, Blair Walsh. <laughs> Anyway, so that happened, but you know, we, we've all, you know, and, and our teams are usually kind of suck equally, generally. So, uh, are you a Ember? Are you a Seattle fan? What's your team if you have a team? Um, we were playing the Giants yesterday and they were th wearing a throwback uniform, and I had no idea who they were. And I was like, who the hell is this? But we, we beat them anyway. So, they can celebrate, they, they can celebrate their loss in their traditional 100 year old colors. Anyway, so that was that was good for me. Um, <laughs> you know, kind of back to the things. I got some things here I want to talk about briefly. I'm going to bring them up. And uh, for those of you who are watching, um, we'll talk about them if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, have you you guys have heard about the trad wife thing, right? Traditional wife, trade wife, how the trad wife kind of rhymes with Chad, <laughs> Chad wife, trad wife. Um, I've got an article up about this woman who who she uh escaped the trad wife hell oh oh no <laughs> ah gotcha gotcha so you're not terribly offended that we we clubbed your giants like baby harp seals yesterday no baby harp seals were were harmed and i do not condone the clubbing of baby harp seals. anyway um <laughs> yeah so that was a good that was a good deal but but have you guys had heard about this trad wife thing now i've heard about it you know and it sure seems like a 
it seems like just right wing, con- or not right wing, but religious oppression of women. That's all it seems like, you know, barefoot. I mean, the literal definition of barefoot and pregnant. Let me do this. I got, I've been working on this here. So I've got this article up here from The Independent, which is a highly trustworthy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's about this woman. And essentially the deal is, is, you know, the religious. She got to get got with her husband. The more, the longer they were together, the more into the church he became and became started going to more and more conservative churches and essentially taking away more and more of her rights and and this is kind of a thing that, i mean there there is like a i don't want to call it a a cottage industry <laughs> of this kind of thing but but i mean this is a thing now this is a thing Nowadays, I think we call that the trad wives with like con- Christian conservatives is kind of what, what this is coming from. But this is that's no different, really, really, than those women who are in any other ultra-religious, right? It doesn't have to be Christian conservative like this stuff here where they call they go all those extremes. It, 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 Ember, you know, uh, Ember here, if you, yeah, you can see it on the thing. The chat's working. Look at the chat working. Um, it's so strange to me, she says, that uh, some women are invested in their own oppression. And, you know, I tell you, I get it. I I, I, I mean, I don't get it. I, I, I really I just want to take off your glasses moments. I don't get, get why women would support or would go into something like this with a, some kind of conservative Christian or religious willingly. You know, I mean, some some of them are in a culture where they, they have no choice. But I, I don't see why a woman such as women in the South who would just South of the not that they have to be from the South, but it's kind of really pervasive there where where they want to become a trad wife. That's their thing. Um, I don't get that. I, that's like. I, I don't want to say things, you know, it's just like it's like it's like it's like people of color. Or gays voting for MAGA conservatives. I don't get that at all. I, I don't get that at all. Another thing I don't get, I mean, I get the dichotomy and the, the um, uh, con- conflict because you've got these, uh, these conservative people are against gays and they're against people of color and trans people and all that. But a lot of them actually are gay. And people of color and that that boggles me boggles me a lot now you can the the people of color part I, I struggle I struggle to understand why people of color would would vote right wing I mean I just don't get it not in our today modern modern right wing conservative maggot why now now why gays would though you know again now now here's the deal though there are a lot, actually a lot of gay um um don't tell me the word. I know it. Yes, it's too small. I can't read it, but thank you. Let me do this and see if I can read what happened here. No, nope, no, nope, it's gone. <laughs> I'm old. Let me get this here out of the way. Boop, and I can see better if it happens again. There we go. Trees keep voting for the axe. Exactly. Trees keep voting for the axe. And then then they're like, well, we don't like gays. Gays are bad. We're going to have a convention over here, and we're just going to all get together and talk about how bad gays are. And then they go to the 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 convention, and Grinder collapses because of all the closeted homosexuals who, now that they're there, they're all hitting Grinder because you know they're all away from home, they're all in this place, and you know Grinder freaking. What does that tell you? You know, so many people vote against their own interest, and it just it just it just blows me away. It blows me away. So this is one of those things, you know, this is not just Christian conservative trad wife. And I mean, it's, it's pervasive from where I come from, you know, um, it's like being a 1940s or 1950s mom minus the, you know, and then you just throw on lots of religion on it. Um, and that's just, that's just absolute oppression. Essentially, I, I don't know, you know, from a man's point of view, I don't know. Is it all that bad to have a woman in there? Another, it's like having a robot or a, a, a trained pet, but like human smart, not like dog smart, but like human smart. A trained pet in the other room that, you know, her whole purpose, not job, <laughs> no, 
not her job, her purpose in this world is to serve you. I, I don't know, from a guy's standpoint, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but I do, you know, but that's what they want, right? Is that, am I right? I'm, and you see, there are some religions, I feel, where they're, even though from my perspective, they're oppressing the women, the women don't think that. And, I, you know, I mean, that's just, that's culture, raising, you know, all those things. It's just, it's a tough call. But to see people willingly put themselves under this boggles my mind. And I got another thing to talk about. Now, here in the thing, I'm, I'm going to go back to me because I've got, I finally got my show fixed and working. Oh, my goodness, that was driving me nuts. Um, but I didn't want to mess with this one because I was so busy doing other stuff over the weekend. So I finally got this, all this going. So now we can actually start having fun. <laughs> good stuff now that I got all this you know not that I'm ready actually right now to have fun and good stuff I will begin developing fun um stuff and oh by the way Andy Hall uh will be joining us Monday uh, no, 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 no Wednesday I believe Wednesday Wednesday Andy will be joining me so uh he's gonna yes the part of the old gang is getting back together he's gonna come in and say hi and howdy to all you folks I'm gonna have to throw some uh, schedule some shows and and um do the thing at the place with Andy yeah you guys are gonna love it. Andy's a lot of fun if you have if you're one of the new viewers to the show and you you've never seen me and Andy we're we're, we're fun together we're fun I, I dig Andy <laughs> he laughs like that <laughs> I'm sorry Andy if you're watching <laughs> but he's great he, we got some good comedy together we we, we work well together uh, in certain areas and others are other areas you know there's been times I've been over here if you know if you're familiar with ranty Chris I'll be over here going blah 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 and I'm about to say something and he's like whoa 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 easy and I'm like Andy shut the hell up he's like man I'm just I'm just fluffing your balls here <laughs> stroking your balls is what he said meaning I'm keeping you from saying something you're gonna regret and I'm like arr, arr. and he was so right you know Andy he's awesome <laughs> there's just this this interpretation of what he says you know he's got that boston accent i think it's cool he when her, he says things at the end of if it has an a at the end of it he puts an r at the end of it like english people do you know you might not notice it but if you listen to people from england they'll say russia instead of russia you know and and andy does that too with his accent it's, it's like i need to give him a hard time about that when he comes back Matter of fact, let me uh, let me give you guys while you're here, since you're here, let's do this. This is an Andyism. Life is complicated. These are trying times. There are many questions that need answering. Want to know what's going to help? Atheism. With atheism, you'll get rid of dogma, superstitions, and toxic thought patterns that are holding you back. You can drive while taking atheism, as well as use heavy machinery. In fact, drinking alcohol, fornicating, and Sunday mornings are far more enjoyable with atheism. However, there are side effects. Some evangelicals and fundamentalists will think you are possessed by the devil. But you don't have to worry, because you know the devil isn't real. Just like God. Wake up to your life. Believe in yourself. Believe in science. Atheism. Thank you to Andy Hall, Andy Hall for that one. Again, he will be with us Wednesday. He's going to join us Wednesday. It's going to be some good fun. Um, trees keep, yep, 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 yep. So there, there's another thing I wanted to point out again about this uh, article here with this lady. Did it really stay that way? It did. Don't be broke already with Mike. Is it over there? All right, that's cool. Um, the thing is, and I can fix that, by the way. Let me do this. Okay, the thing is that, um, damn it, Chris. Sorry, guys. One moment, one moment. I saw this on TV once. I know how to do this. All right, there we go. Um, is that, you know, throughout their time together, he would threaten them. Now, it, it wasn't just religious oppression. This was, this was domestic abuse couched in religious oppression. This man had issues. Jealousy issues, control issues, and he used the church to help him assert those 
urges and influences on his wife that wouldn't have gone over anywhere else. But because, and then when, of course, she when 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 she goes to that, we're gonna. Oh, I wish I had the poll set up. What do you folks think happened whenever she went to the church people for help? Hmm. Okay, so she didn't get help, and after years and years of this abuse, um, hey. It's, oh my God, it's God equals the square root of wrong. You know, I mean, all the cool people are here now. We can start the show. <laughs> um, if, if you go on and read the article about this right here, um, she talks about how he kept threatening her that he was going to, you know, unalive her and their children. I believe they had four or five whenever this happened. And, uh, you know, he gets mad and storms off one night. And uh, she gets in her car and she's she's done she gets in her car and she gets her kids and she runs away and as she's coming back she realizes he had gone to the office to get the gun that he was going to unalive them all with and unalive himself you know trying to keep from getting the shadow ban i really saw it this past week it went and then just nothing for hours and hours and hours and now my channel's just finally starting to get a little i don't know what happened something happened but anyway um yeah, 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 the, yeah. I know. Shh, yeah. So that is classic. Is that not classic? To where a woman will be in a situation like that, be in an abusive relationship, and the church will not help them. They will continue to help that man oppress the church or oppress the woman. It even goes so far as to there have been times, and you can certainly find the articles on the internet where the man was essaying a child of some kind or something a relative and the church helped him cover it up or help now that's not even going into the catholic church thing at all right that's not even going to that that's just talking about normal churches you want to talk about the southern baptist church how many uh, how many how many how many goodness gracious how many children have been victimized because of that organization um, now, there's another thing that I wanted to be a part of, especially as a kid, the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts, Christian organization going under, being sued out because of all the good Christian leaders who essayed children. Yeah, yeah. These sorts of things <laughs> that you just kind of see. All right. So now because this is the kind of nerd I am. You know, part of it didn't really even kind of, I didn't even think that this would segue into this second part of this uh, show that I was planning on talking about here with you guys. But but check this out. Wow, wow, wow. In the Pacific, a dumping ground for priests accused or convicted of abuse. Abuse of, of course, what? Abuse of what? Can any of you guess? What is it with these people? You know? I mean, what is it? I don't get it. What, maybe it's just availability is all it is, you know? But, but you know, maybe it's just not that big a deal if you were to actually run statistics on how many priests actually had affairs with women. There, there's probably not a... I wonder, though. I wonder. I, I wonder if... Hey, Paul, man. I was wondering where Paul was. I was, I was, I was. I thought, good to see you, Paul. Good to see you. Um, but I, I, while you're here, this is a good thing for you to. Right, so, we were talking about what happened with this here on the article. Oh, let me get this up here for you so you can kind of see it. Surprise, surprise, surprise. But you know, if a, if a priest comes out and it is learned that he has had an affair with a woman, does that get kick, him kicked out of the priesthood? You know. What if it comes out that he's secretly married to a woman? Does that get him kicked out of the priesthood? How often does it happen? What percentage of the time? You know, like 70% of the time when a priest is caught having an affair with a female, he's, you know, blah, 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 and kicked out of the family, you know, right? Okay, because that's bad, according to them. It's not illegal, according to us. It's just bad, according to them. But whenever it's a kid, what do they do? Well, you know, I mean, I don't have the numbers. I really should have thought about the numbers. And, you know, of course, I was rebuilding the show this morning, but I, I saw I kind of, but, you know, just in Boston alone, remember that movie? There was a movie just in Boston alone, like 1900, was it, it was either kids or priests. If it was priests, then they're a hell of a lot more. I, I got to go look up the numbers. One of the thing that brings it to me, let me look here. Um, 
Yeah, Paul is here. Nice to see you, Paul. Appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by. Um, that's why they're endlessly calling GSM folk the G word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, um, here we've got this article about how they've been dumping priests where in the Pacific, right? Papua New Guinea, you know? And this is one of those things where at least, at least 10 priests and missionaries moved to Papua New Guinea after, whew, right? I, this is a repeat. This is a, they, they do this a lot. And I just don't see it. It's just one of those things that they, they keep doing it. I, because probably everybody knows and I don't care so much yet until it starts getting really crazy. But I, I live in New Mexico and there are and have been churches here in New Mexico. Catholic, of course. <laughs> Not that it had to be Catholic, you know? I mean, right? Because they spread that crap around. Anyway, um, that, 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 that's exactly what they did. They would move priests who were accused of this this other business here and hide them and let them let them live here and then of course what do they end up doing here you know and it's sort of like why would you move them here for well for the same reason why you would hold the nuclear tests in new mexico because there's nobody here it's really big area with little bitty people it's little bitty spaces not a lot of people most of them are kind of brown and nobody in the big government listens to them unfortunately so and the authorities right so they're not that and it just kind of that's so they're just going to dump them there but you know with the modern world and technology they kind of got all found out and there's news articles and hell we've talked about it on the show before about the santa fe and the churches here and blah 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 in new mexico but but now they found a place that was further away, and this is only ten, right? This is like ten people. Where the the, the to me the number is surprisingly small, to be honest. Um, who knows? I don't know why. Maybe they've got another better place that we ain't found yet. But yeah, there's quite a few of them that tends to do that. Let's see. What do priests and red? All right, let's. Uh, God equals the square root of one. Has a question. What do priests? And Red Bull have in common. Now, let's try to keep this kind of. <laughs> all right, this could get ugly. I don't know. Uh, all right, so God equals the square root of negative one. What do priests and Red Bull have in common? <laughs> um, good morning to everybody who's joining us. Thank you. We've been talking about uh, this uh, trad wife thing that's going on over here in the United States and uh, how it's really something of a. A horrific trap for women not only is it a religious trap for them but it's also a trap where they're they're abusive men use it to control women even if they're not particularly religious to begin with it's a method of control that they use to get these women to do what they want and and it's kind of oh damn <laughs> damn <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> yeah i'm not i mean i get it that's great if you can see it on the screen that's a good one that's a good one i'm gonna that's, that's funny you know guys i one time a long time ago long time ago i made a commercial it was just an audio thing i didn't have video with it at the time i didn't do that back then you know it was just audio and it was a commercial for father flanagan's line of inflatable altar boys <laughs> Coming to a Walmart near you. <laughs> um, the wife just, she's dying for me to put that on and make it, you know, because it's, you know, it's, I think it's hilarious. The church might not like think it's hilarious. You know, the little dolls come with eyes and mouth wide with surprise. <laughs> <sighs> but that's not funny. That's not funny. <laughs> But it's funny, you know, I mean, when you're mocking them, because, you know, part of the deal is about humor. Yeah, I'm not mocking uh, in those situations. We're, we're not mocking the victim. We're mocking the predator. And by doing so, we bring awareness to it. It's not intended to, you know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. We're not, we're not those kind of people. That's rough. They both, yeah. That's a good one, guy. <laughs> hey, I'm supposed to be the funny one. 
on the show. I'm going to have to talk to HR if you keep that up. So good morning, people. That's that's what kind of what we're going on here. We've got this uh, priests. Man, we, they found another one of these things. I'm going to go. I have to go back and do some reviews and see what's going on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Because uh, it's just been so long. But you you know, I mean, they're just, the numbers are just staggering, staggering of how many of these these priests, you know. The priests? And they, all right, all right, all right. I, I've, been, I've been unnecessarily bashing specifically on Catholics. I did mention the Southern Baptist. Anybody here, anybody in the chat know why they're called, why the Southern Baptist split off from the rest of the Baptists? Anybody? I mean, if you happen to know, let me know and I'll, I mean, I know why. <laughs> um, some of you probably know why too. But anyway, so those people, they're, they're, same thing, same thing. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that causes this. Is it repression because they're sexually repressed? That they take these feelings out on the only people they kind of can sometimes? And I'm not just talking about Catholic priests. I'm talking about any religious leader like uh you know who's in in contact with these people doesn't have to just be a priest it could be anybody um and it could just be repression the the religion itself oppresses religion a lot or sex a lot and there's another thing about sex is that especially whenever you taboo it any tag sex is now all of a sudden taboo then it just changes the mindset and and of course so maybe that's it. Maybe that's why this happens so often. You know, again, bringing up the Boy Scouts. Just because availability. You know, men are pigs. Everybody knows men are pigs anyway. Generally. In general. Um, yeah, so I don't know. That's a tough tough knot to untie right there. But oftentimes, and this is kind of where we're going with this, is oftentimes people on the right come on and they're like, you know, they call the, the, the ones on the left those things, pedos or, or whatever. And they do it a lot. But really, whenever you look at it, mm, it looks like percentage-wise, those folks are on the right, you know? So that's a stone they really shouldn't be casting. Anyway, so we've got these two things here that we were talking about. There we go. Um, for those of you who are joining us, my Vikings won this weekend. Yay. Uh, Embers, sorry, Ember. I didn't mean to bring that up. <laughs> Ember's Giants did not win this weekend. Um, but she's not much of a sports ball person. Uh, so if you're a sports ball person, let us know who your team is and what, how, what, how they did. Um, yes. So mine did good this weekend. <sighs> so now also for those of you who are unaware, I've started a second stream in the evening. Uh, it's called Crazy Talk. And it's all political talk. It happens at 8 p.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Uh, I keep saying I'm going to drop a link, but I'm lazy and I don't, so I will drop a link. So if you guys don't, if you're not subscribed to the Amazing Super Chris over on my other channel, it's on a different channel. If you're not subscribed, you should be. Come over there and subscribe to to my thing. Let me pop you guys up a link to the channel. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Yeah, yeah, I should have this ready. I know, I know. But it's, you know, it, and a lot of it's sort of similar to what we're doing now. You know, um, but uh, now today, again, guys, and I'm sorry, and I don't mean to keep talking about the show all the time, but I'm almost done. I've got the show finally fixed. Now we can start going forward and having fun. I just, today, I had to rebuild it sudden like before the show, leaving me little time to kind of get ready. But in the future, we're going to have some good shit here, man. Uh, let me find this here for us. So here is my channel. It is... We'll put this link. If you're not a subscriber, go to that voodoo that you do so well and become a subscriber. Okay? I appreciate you. Um, 420 Atheist. Hey, 420 Atheist. One of my favorites. You know, every now and then I run a commercial just so I can join you in the 420 sphere. I'm like, oh, you guys watch this. <laughs> and then as I'm, you know, my... <sighs> My software is so kind of jicky. Every now and then I'll be running a commercial. I'll look up and it's just showing me. <laughs> oh, hey, it's not supposed to be going. I even listen to them so I can know. And uh, so, you know, the last thing I want to be doing is like. <laughs> oh, I don't want to know. So I try to be careful. <laughs> Good morning, 420 Atheist, my hero. Um, let's see. Yep, I'm reading our text. So good so far. There we go. So that's my evil plan of doom and despair. Coming forward, going forward, I'm going to be 
I'm going to try to be developing more good stuff. I finally got all my streams up and my shows built and everything's going great. Andy, in case you hadn't heard, is going to be here Wednesday. So come by and check out Andy with me. We're, we're, we're a lot of fun. So go do that. And then um, let's see. God created us so he could watch us masturbate. That's a fantastic perspective. Um, now, one of the things... I ought to play it. I'll play one of my, my early Evil God Monster of Abraham series because you guys ain't seen those. <laughs> but in one of them, I talk about how God runs around. Great to see you too. Um, God runs around um, in, the, in, the, in the Bible. Originally, um, they were naked, right? Was God naked too? <laughs> Questions. <laughs> Why did he want them naked? If looking at them naked was so bad. Let's see if it's going to work. I'm going to do this. This will give me just a moment of a break. I think it's this one. I hope it's this one. We're going to find out. You guys are, you guys are awesome. Here, bear with me. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to The Daily Atheist. In this episode of my Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll be covering Genesis chapter 2 of the Book of Death, where, with the single word, the evil God Monster of Abraham fires the first salvo in the religious war on women. Stick around. Okay, before we get too far along, I have to warn you that your soul will be found lacking for some reason probably related to your sexual organs by the amazing Super Chris. If you don't reach out and click that subscribe button, then hit that little notification bell. Don't get smited, my friends. Do it now. Now, on with the show. So where chapter one is a wide angle view of creation, chapter two is still zoomed out a bit, but it's a much closer picture, if you will. And it focuses primarily on the creation of paradise and man and woman. So as I read chapter two of Genesis in the book of death, I just want to point out a couple of logical inconsistencies as part of our atheist Bible study endeavors. In chapter one, it says plants were formed on the third day and man was formed on the sixth day. In chapter two, it says, no plants had formed on the earth, yet God created man, then the plants. Genesis 1, verse 11 through 13 said, Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants, and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Man, as we all know, was created on the sixth day in chapter 1. But in Genesis 2, verses 5 through 7, it says, Now no shrub had yet appeared. Okay, that's not the one I wanted you guys to watch. That was, yeah, because that one's, all right, I'm gonna, I, and I would run the, uh, let me do this and see if it's going to work. I don't want to do that. I don't want to waste your time on that. Anyway, I've got one where it's all funny, and I'm talking about, why does God want to watch these people walk around naked if it's so bad and evil? Was God naked? Is his godly phallus flopping about? That sort of thing was hilarious. Hilarious. But I don't want to, I'll figure it out. i got to make a lot of better notes here. Yeah. So... Let me go there. One second. Oh, I'm going to get a, make another video. <laughs> Not to talk too much politics, but I can talk politics. Tell what everybody. My genitals are lacking because of your soul. I, I heard that about you, actually. Um, so you know, Kamala Harris gets nominated at the DNC, and she comes down. She's like, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." Come on, guys. We got to go. Let's go. Come on. She even said, come on, let's go. And they kept applauding. She's like, thank you. Thank you. Perfectly normal. Trump comes out and he goes, did you see how many times she said thank you? And he just kind of went off about it like, she's going like crazy. <laughs> and then I've got this, I got this interview of him where he uh, was after the, the Arlington National Cemetery thing <laughs> where he's being interviewed and they're like, why did you let that happen? You know, he's like, well, somebody came to ask me if I could take a photograph and they, they wanted to take a photograph. And so I said, sure. And, we, and you, how many times this guy says photograph? He just kind of just keeps rambling on about and taking a photograph and taking so I'm going to make a video about that because I'm, I'm just funny that way. One of these days I'm going to make a video that's actually going to work and tickle the algorithm. I mean, not like today or any day soon, but Someday it'll tickle the algorithm. I figured out a long time ago, live streams don't tickle the algorithm. <laughs> you don't tend to just go from nothing to pink and get a big all, you know, it's those videos. You got to drop those good videos. 
And so I drop videos and they suck. So, <laughs> so no wonder. Uh, man, woman, person, camera, TV. Let me see if I can do man, woman, person. What comes after that? Person, man. Damn. I'm not as, I'm not as cognitive. Just, I'm not as Koji. <laughs> Koji Herent. <laughs> as, uh, as Trump. Coffee's kicking in. It's been a good morning for coffee. Um, yeah, so... Okay, yeah, that's a good, you know, 420 Atheist, not going to lie. I'd sneak a peek over the urinal at God's junk. you got to be curious. I mean, they often, they, I mean, it's he, right? He, it is a he. Is it not? I mean, not just any kind of he. i got to capitalize the he. Hmm. So it's a he, definitely he. So the, I guess you have to have junk in order to be a he. Am I right? According to the right, you have to have the junk. If you're a he, you got to have the junk. Even If not, you're just playing a pronoun game. <laughs> so, let's see. Does he have junk? Why does he have junk? Is he circumcised? Why is he circumcised? Why is he not circumcised? What's his problem with circumcision? Questions, pesky questions. <laughs> You know, I mean, what's what's up with that? I thought we were made in God's image. Made in God's image. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that's a good question. Questions, pesky questions. We gotta worry about that. Yeah. You know, I figure he probably. You know, I mean, there's huge junk. His mighty manhood flopping about. Of course, that's just crazy. I don't know. It's almost like I gotta do it. 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 Was it this one? Hello and welcome to The Daily Atheist. I'm Chris Mallard. Thank you for joining me. In this episode of the Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll cover Genesis chapter 3 in the Book of Death, the chapter in which God made woman a second-class citizen when compared to man, and by his simple non-inclusion, damned the gays and trans people to religious persecution, which has lasted for thousands of years. Also, it literally, biblically, commands women to be subservient to their husbands. The word helper from chapter 2 apparently just wasn't doing it. No surprise coming from the book of death. Stick around. Okay. The evil god monster is watching, and he doesn't want you to hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell. He's trying to push you around, and I don't think you should put up with that crap. Click the button. Hit the bell. Do the thing. Show him who's the boss. Thumb your nose at the Almighty. Do it now. And now, on with the show. Special thanks to my patrons, merch buyers, and those friends out there who provide moral support. You guys are wonderful. Thank you. Okay, chapter one gave us a wide angle view of creation and chapter two narrowed the focus a bit, giving us an idea of how everything comes about. Chapter three picks up there and gives us an up close and personal view, really, of the fall of the time. I'm a pothead, I'm an old pothead. I knew it would though, it got me. And it didn't even get to the good part of the show. That show, where it's talking about God and his dangly bits junk on our... But I, you know, I know, I know how it is. See the God Monster thing. I love that. I was here. So here's what I want to do. I'm working on the God Monster series, my friends. As you know, I've got ten, uh, 13 actually episodes up. I finally got the show mostly fixed. As you, I know why that happened. That was my own fault because I started a commercial or a thing earlier and I didn't finish it. But um, I've got these ten episodes, thirteen episodes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put them in a book and I'm gonna try to sell that book. Right, dude. <laughs> 428th is right, right? It's almost like I planned it. Huh. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to put those in a book and I'm going to sell them on sell, sell the book on Amazon, The Evil God Monster of Abraham. Why would you do that? Well, wh why do I make the videos? To just show people, you know, I mean, I've, I've got a <laughs> 420. I've got a live stream going right now uh, over on, oh, no, it's not going on this channel. I, I dropped it as a video yesterday. I'm not going to run it as a live stream anymore. But uh, the, the Evil God Monster of Abraham series, I've got all 
13 episodes of them together, as well as some quickie with the skeptic episodes where I point out things like in one episode, there's this, this man and woman who are farmers, 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 wearing glasses and all this. God's going to heal them though. And they starve their kid to death. For God, because of God. It just, it just bugs me. You know, anyway, so I made some of those. That's why. <clears throat> Thank you. That, that's why. That's why I make this stuff. I mean, because there's so many people. Religion can. It can't. Cannot. I wanted to say it can be a good thing, but it's a slippery slope. And I mentioned this in my first book, um, <clears throat> Antitheist, and why you should be too. And in the first book, I mentioned that religion is a slippery slope. Now, you, you, you may have... This little old lady, she's sweet and beautiful and wonderful. She's got this Bible and she loves it. And she's, she's in the pool. It's like being in a pool. And it's kind of got a, got a wet bottom of the, f f bottom of the pool. And she, but she's up at the shallow and that's cool. As long as she stays in the shower and she's good. But if she gets in there and starts going down in, right, then she gets into deeper and deeper. And for long, she's doing harmful things out of religion. Because we all know the closer you come to the core beliefs, tenets of any of these faiths, especially the Abrahamic religions, the closer you get to doing that, the further you move away from being normal functioning in society. Okay, but but that's cool. Because this, this lady, she's just in the, sh deep, the shallow end. She doesn't have any plans on going to the deep end. She loves Jesus. She loves whoever. And she's cool. And then she gives that book to her son. And he takes it a little more seriously than she does. And now it's that slippery slope. And then, you know, sure, sure, she is good. But the message can so easily be corrupted. In fact, that's the store, part of the evil God monster of Abraham series. If you're reading that or watching that series, you will know that that's what it's all about. The hard part is finding the good in it. It's easy for the son to find a bad, hard, murderous message in that book than it is for the goodly people to find a sweet, loving, kind message. They have to ignore so much murder, uh, unaliving, horrible. I mean, I mean, all right. So if, if I, now I want to do it because man, these are my favorite episodes of the evil God monster of Abraham, but they're, they're the ones that talk about Abraham and Sarai episode 13, I think it is. And in these, see, I'm, I just got to get my shit together. Remember which ones they are. But, but in that, I talk about how every single hero in the Bible up to that point has either been in an ancestralist relationship or is descended from people in all the heroes. Why would you even mention that in your holy book? That, that, hi, there's, this is my wife and my sister, and there's one woman standing behind him. Why would they do that? You know, why even mention that in the Bible? And yet, in the Bible, up until the first 13 episodes of the book, incest is either implied or directly stated throughout. Either Adam and Eve and, you know, it's not, remember, it's not Adam and Steve, it's Adam and Eve. And Eve and Cain and Eve and Abel. And even Seth, I guess. Even Seth had to get some. Right? So even, I mean, right? I mean, right? Because that's how you make a race. Out of three, two people. When you start with two people. So. Oh, yeah, that's a good episode. That's a good episode. I'm tempted, guys. I'm tempted. I may, I may play it after the 8 o'clock hour. Once the uh, people who are here for, you know, like an hour, they're like, I'm done with this bastard. I may play that for you folks who are just keen and abusing yourselves. This is a good episode. I like it. Of 12 and 13. Man, that's good shit right there. Mm, mm, mm. But then, all right, so then let's talk about Moses. I'm not Moses. Sorry. I have read the Bible. <laughs> let's talk about Noah. Uh-oh. So Noah and his son and his wife, sons and wives, three sons and each of their wives and Noah and his wife. I mean, they're all, they're all related. All of them. It's like one family, one family. Like, hey, cuz, how you doing? Right? Am I right? I'm right. I can't, I can't not be right because everybody else was dead, you know? So they're either, of course, there's always sheep. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. I just, and why you would even... 
Somebody wasn't thinking. Somebody wasn't thinking. <laughs> Yes, it was necessary for the story. I have a long story. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Let me catch up with the chat just a minute. Um, thank you. Let's see. Um, awesome book. Thank you for that. Okay, that's good. Ember, I have a long standing, standing challenge for Christian. Name me one immoral act that isn't either condoned or outright commanded in the book. Just one. There's nothing wicked that God doesn't endorse. That's interesting. I mean, right? That is that is cray-cray when you stop and think about it. Um, and this is something I get, oh, let's, let's. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this. Let's talk about Lot. Now, people say that the story of Lot and his daughters, you know, the story of Lot and his daughters Here's my argument, and I argue this in the book, one of my books, guys. I guess I got to, I've talked about this before. <laughs> but God condoned what happened in that cave. He did. Now, here's the story. God's hero of the story, Lot, and his daughters go into this cave. Now, the daughters, thinking, oh, darn, we're stuck in this cave with our father and are never going to get out ever and ever see any other men. Um, so we may as well go ahead and get our, or we'll have, have sexy time with our father who art in the cave <laughs> and, um, we're going to have sexy time with our father and then that way we can have children. Okay. But wait, 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 wait. It says shortly before that in the Bible as Sarah, Sarai and Abram, Abraham are going through their problems, um, having kids. As they're going through that, it says that you only have kids if a, a, a baby if God approves it. If God doesn't approve of a baby, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You don't have a baby. So that's the blessing. If you have the baby, that's a, a blessing. Now, if you have a male, that's even better. We all know that, right? Everybody knows. because <laughs> Just because. Anyway, so. And then... If you have a son who goes on to become the father of a nation, that is like the ultimate, the ultimate blessing that God at this point in the Bible could put onto you. So have a baby. Can't have it without God. If you're really good, God will give you a boy. If you're really freaking good, your boy will be the leader of nations. Okay? We got all that. The daughters go into the thing and... God's prophet who was, he was willing to save from all these horrors, being turned into a Saul, all these things, couldn't save him from his own daughter. So they get him drunk one at a time. He's at least 90, I think, at this time. He's very old. Um, and so he's very old. And so they have to get him drunk in order to have sexy time with him. No, the, I think the oldest daughter comes up with the idea because, you know, they're wicked. And, and something else, all women in the Bible are wicked. All of them. There's no, there's no good women in the Bible. Anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. They're all bad. Um, but they, so they, they, now they, they, they know that he won't, he won't sexy time with them uh, unless they get him drunk. So they get him drunk. So drunk that he doesn't remember the next day that he had sexy time with his own daughter. Okay. So. I'm just going by what's in the book, right? I'm, I don't know. I'm just, and so there's questions. First of all, as old as he was, they didn't have Viagra. How'd that work? And then have you ever heard of Whiskey Dick? I've heard of Whiskey Dick. I was in my prime at like, you know, 18 to 20, whenever. I don't remember. I was so drunk. I was like, why aren't you? Come forth. Go, go, gadget, penis. <laughs> Nothing, because I had whiskey dick. I was I was too drunk to. I mean, there's been other times, right, when it worked. I'm like, why are you working? Well, all right, let's go. But in any case, so I mean, this old man, so drunk, he's not going to remember the next day. Old man to begin with, so drunk, he's not going to avoid whiskey dick. And then the next night, I believe I could be wrong, but I believe it's right. Where'd they get the night? The wine, truth. Hashtag truth. Where'd they get the wine? Yeah, didn't they like run there in a cave? I mean, they just ran there with what they could carry. Anyway, 
questions, pesky questions. So then the next day, the 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 younger daughter does the same thing. She gets Papa drunk, so drunk, in fact, that he can't, or that he won't remember the following morning that he's had sexy time with his second daughter. And again, no hangover, I guess. Right? I mean, this dude is impressive, <laughs> clearly. Um, so again, they have they have sexy time. And then Hey, 420 Atheist. That's pretty good of me keeping track of my mental pro- thought processes despite the... Huh? Huh? Am I doing good? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, the second girl, the younger daughter, gets him gets him drunk. They have sexy time. But this isn't sanctioned by God, clearly, right? This is not this this is incest. This is not right. This is essentially raping an elder. Am I wrong? Essaying an elder. Sorry, YouTube. Okay, there's other ways we in our modern society would see it. There's I mean there's and like what would make them think they were never gonna get out of that cave? Why would you think that? You know? And there's the, oh man, the story of Lot. That's one of my favorite ones, you know, because there's the story of the Lot and the story of the, the, oh, I forgot. It's been so long since I did it. They're the same story, but told from different perspectives. Anyway, that's a good one. Lot was willing to toss his little virgin daughters. Wait, they were virgins. He was willing to toss his virgin daughters. And then he gets them into the cave. And suddenly, after rushing and watching all their city burn down, or hellfire, or not watching it, right? Because they didn't look back. And then they lost their mother. They're stuck in a cave with their father. And the first thing these wicked, wicked women do is go right to incestually sexy timing with Papa. Hmm. Now, but God surely doesn't see this as good, does he? This would be wicked. Am I right? And I think this is all coming back to uh, one of you said that uh, everything in the Bible is bad. Nothing is wicked God doesn't endorse. That's right. That's right. This is all coming back to that that point that you made. Um, because God does condone this. He does endorse this. Not only does each daughter get pregnant. Let me just kind of run that through a little slower. Not only does each daughter get pregnant by her elderly, drunken father who somehow managed to not only do the business, but to get some some product, right? Okay. So, that's what, yeah, so that happened. God can tell that. She had a baby. She, so he must have blessed that, right? According to what we were talking about earlier. Train of thought, 420, train of thought. So, so he must have condoned that. And then if he condoned that, that's how she got the baby. And then it wasn't just a baby. It was a boy. And it wasn't just a boy, but it went on to become the father of nations. So God in this story of Lot literally blesses this incestual um, geriatric abuse situation. I mean, that's cray cray. It's crazy. Now let's talk about the younger daughter. <clears throat> Pardon. Not only was she able to get Papa to pop, 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 everything the same. Everything. Not only did she get pregnant after only one time. Lucky. That's good. That's good timing, really. Got pregnant. It was a boy. Went on to be the father of nations. So, what does that mean? (laughs) That means God condoned it in a huge way. Huge way. (laughs) So, yeah. True. Let's... uh, Hive side. Good morning, Hive. Good morning, Bree. How are you doing? I hope you're doing great. That's awesome to see you. Um, Let me catch up with our chat here. Where did they get the wine for all those nights of blackout drunkenness? Yes, yes. Melissa was sure it was already there, right? Maybe the angels brought it because they were. 
that's another part of the story of Lot. You know, they're traveling, I think, at some point with the angels that showed up at Lot's house. And the angels were like, dude, you need to go here. I'm an angel from God. I am literally a freaking angel. And I'm telling you to go here. And Lot's like, no, I can't go there. That would be too far for me to go. I cannot go there. I must go here. And then Lot convinces the angels, because he knows better, the angels who art of heaven. He knows better. And he goes there to the mountains. And then he can't stay there. So he has to flee to where they told him to go to in the first place. Anyway, lots of, that's a fun story. I really enjoy the Bible. It's so stupid. <laughs> Uh, and Spooky Bed Hair, too. Good morning, Spooky Bed Hair. Um, 420 Atheist says the entire city is genocided. That's right. That's right. Wife turned to salt by God for looking in the wrong direction. Lot gets blackout drunk. Daughter raped. Yep, 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 yep. You cannot see the living God. That's true. And that's not even all of it. Whenever you think about who are the people inhabiting the city of Gomorrah and Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. Most of them are, well, they're all, they're all Jews. They're all he Hebrews. Okay. So whenever the angels went to Lot in his home and the, the horny horde of homosexual Hebrews began to bang on the doors to demand that they send out the angels so they could have sex with them. That's just, oh my God, that's just ridiculous. That's what I say in my book all the time. I call them the horny horde of homosexual Hebrews. <laughs> in my first book, uh, Antitheist and Why You Should Be Too. Um, all of my favorite people are here. That's awesome. Good morning, folks. Thank you for joining me. Uh, yeah, we've reached the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and play my favoritists, uh, if you don't mind, is the one. All right, I'm going to do this one here. Here we go. Lot. Oh. And like I said, one of the things I want to do with these Evil God Miles from Abraham series and whatever I bring out, if I bring out some old stuff, I'm going to chop off all the, the little intro and exit stuff just because it's just too much. It doesn't go, the flow doesn't go with the show. So, oh, we're going to have to do this one the hard way. I can, ooh, that's cool because I can even pause it then, can't I? All right, you guys hold on one second. You're worth it. You're worth it. You're worth the trouble. <laughs> Um, but a bum. It's the Egmoa, 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 evil god mon, the evil god monster of Abraham. Mi burrito está no bueno. Okay, almost there. Here we go. Don't make any noises. Okay, ah, oh, I can get past that. Boop, here I am. Very dashing. Okay, let's go back to here. And we're going to go. Hello and welcome to The Daily Atheist. I'm Chris Mallard. Thank you for joining me. In this episode of the Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll cover Genesis chapter 13 in the Book of Death. The chapter in which Abram and Lot are so wealthy from their adventures in Egypt that they decide to go their separate ways. And Abram's imaginary god... Hello and welcome to The Daily Atheist. I'm Chris Mallard. Thank you for joining me. In this episode of the Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll cover Genesis chapter book of death. The chapter in which Abram leaves his father's home, moves to Egypt, then he and his sister wife give the pharaoh of Egypt a sexually transmitted disease. <laughs> Stick around. This is one of my favorites. I think I like the other one better though. It's, I don't know. We got some good ones here. I want to be able to cut this one. button then there we go awesome. protect yourself from abram's crotch cricket curse by reaching out and clicking that subscribe button then hitting that little notification bell keep your jiggly bits safe my friends now on with the show awesome i got buttons perfect thank you I have to be honest, these next few chapters, which contain the story of Abram slash Abraham, are some of my favorite chapters in the Old Testament. In case you're unaware, the Abram I'm talking about is the same Abram who is considered the father of the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. To catch you up, Abram is a direct descendant of Noah, who is, of course, about 10 generations removed from Adam. 
Abram, or Abraham as he's later known, is considered the father of these faiths. In subsequent chapters, he'll go on to make the first covenant with God, securing the, the position of God's chosen people for the ancient Hebrews. In the last chapter, we learned of the incestuous nature of his family. One of Abram's brothers married his own niece, and Abram married his own half-sister. In later chapters, Lot, Abram's nephew, will go on to have incestuous sex and subsequently children with his own daughters. So far, 11 chapters into the Book of Death, and every major family or hero is in some way in this relationship, Everyone. either implied or directly stated. Right. Who did Cain and Abel have children with to populate the earth? Either their mother or sisters that Adam and Eve produced later. Who did the children of Noah breed with to repopulate the earth? He had three sons who had one wife each. At best, it was first cousin on first cousin after that. At best. Then we get to Abram and his family, and the Bible directly tells us they married within their own family. Abram married his own sister, and his brother Nahor married his own niece. <laughs> By our modern notions, marital incest is not generally something you go around bragging about, let alone writing down in a holy text. But the Bible makes no effort to hide it. Of course, scientifically, we know the harms of inbreeding, such as physical deformities and mental handicaps. And there is absolutely no reason to believe incest wasn't the norm for the entire lineage, from Adam right down to Abram. So what kind of quality offspring could Abram possibly have been? You gotta ask hmm? yourself. Now, on to chapter 12. This chapter opens with God telling Abram to leave his father's house and that God will make Abram a great nation. So the spry young Abram picks up his bride Sarai and his nephew Lot, and they toddle off into the desert. Well, he's not really spry so much. Genesis 12 verse 4 says he was 75 years old when he left his father's household. And in Genesis chapter 17, we learn that Sarai is about 10 years younger than Abram. So we'll pin her at around 65 years old when they leave. They traveled to the land of Canaan, to the great tree of Moriah, then onto the hills east of Bethel. Then they set out for Negev, but a famine forced them down to Egypt. Because desert travel is powerful good for the body, especially elderly folk. I'm just saying. Now, here's where things get really interesting. As they were about to enter Egypt, he says, Genesis 12, verses 11 through 13, <laughs> I know what a beautiful woman you are. When these see you, they will say, this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but let Say you are my sister, so that I will be treated well for your sake, and my life will be spared because of you. Wait, what? Yeah, based on what we know so far, Sarai is at least 65 years old and bred from the same incestuous stock as Abram, because they're brother and sister, right? And considering all the hard desert miles she's bound to have had on her and the lack of any modern form of dentistry, etc., I seriously doubt she's the oil of Olay model type of 65 plus. And yet here he is telling her that she's so beautiful, he'll get killed if she claims to be his wife. So she needs to pretend to be his sister. Really? That's just crazy. So that's how it was done in Egypt back in the day. If you saw a hot gilf passing through the town, the hot general gilf, rule was to murder her elderly husband and take her a prize. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe. Genesis 12, 14 and 15. When Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarai was a very beautiful woman. And when Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken to his palace. Okay, so this dilapidated desert daisy was so beautiful that the Pharaoh's men saw her and were so taken by her that they felt the need to literally go tell the Pharaoh. And of all the young and beautiful women of Egypt, the Pharaoh ends up going for this gorgeous goat herding granny. Right... But you know what? Apparently it paid off. Genesis 12 verse 16 says, He, the Pharaoh, treated Abram well for her sake. And Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. So what do you think the Bible author means by for her sake? For her beauty or for her vagina? 
I find it highly unlikely in such a savage land as Egypt is being portrayed that the pharaoh gave all that wealth just so he could simply look upon her beauty. And if all he wanted to do was gaze upon her grain granny goods, he could have done that whether she was Abram's sister, wife, brother, it didn't, it does, that, that doesn't matter, right? To add to the dripping misogyny, notice the reward doesn't go to her. It goes to Abram. She's used as little streetwalker and all the wealth goes to her pimp. I mean, husband. I mean, it, it sure looks like Abram is literally pimping his wife out to the Pharaoh. Is the lesson to be learned here that your sister wife to another man is a method of acquiring wealth? Great moral grounding for a religion. Imagine basing your religion on indecent proposal 2000 BC. So if before seeing this video, I told you that the father of the Abrahamic religion literally whored out his sister wife to the Pharaoh of Egypt for some coin cattle and slaves, would you have believed me? Well, here it is. He claims it was out of fear for his life, but it sure seems more like it was a business transaction to me. And didn't he have the power of God to protect him? He was already talking to God. No power there? Anyway, and now my friends, as if to bolster the notion Pharaoh was knocking boots with Sarai, the part you've all been waiting for, Genesis 12 verse 17 says, But the Lord inflicted serious diseases on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarai. That's right. Sarai gave Pharaoh an STD, which he proceeded to give to his wives and around his household. As you can imagine, the Pharaoh was pissed. Verses 18 through 20 summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way with his wife and every. Notice, despite. Uh, I'm a bad man. I, me and the mute button, we'll get it together someday. We will. We will. I know. I know. I was, I'm a bad man. Okay, here we go. So what I was saying was at the beginning of this, we were like, well, why do you do this? Why are you going to do this? And then here we are once again at the end going, why would you do this? Why would you give your sister wife to the Pharaoh? It's just cray cray. Anyway, so here we go. I can get, yeah, let me do this here for us because this is fun. Your wife, take her take and go. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders GTFO. about Abram to his men and they sent him on his way with his wife and everything he uh, had. Amateur. Notice, despite Pharaoh's anger, he didn't ask for anything back. Instead, he told him to take everything and go because that's what you do when somebody gives you the cooties. You don't want anything from them. Take your shit and go. Take your shit. And so, you know, if Sarai had an STD, then Abram had it. Abram starts talking to an imaginary creature and eventually starts mutilating himself by cutting off the end of his dick, a trick he learned while they were in Egypt, by the way. But let's not jump too far ahead, okay? We'll get to that part soon enough. Hmm. Fodder for another chapter. So far, though, everything the Bible has had to say about Abram reflects very poorly about his character and his lineage. Yet this horror of a man is a prophet of God? Yep. But not of a kind, loving, gentle, merciful God. No, but this is exactly the kind of prophet you'd expect from the evil from? God monster of Abraham yes. and its book of death. Hmm? If you like what I do and you'd like to support my cause, follow the link in the description below to my Patreon and find a tier that works for you. This Patreon also, I have out. some wonderful atheist merch. Again, links are in the description below. Cute. Thank you for all out. your help and support. I appreciate it. Remember, avoid getting the profit plague on your crotch critter by clicking that subscribe button and hitting that little notification bell. Thank you and take care. Thank you for watching the show. A special shout out to my gold level Patreon supporters, the Blazing Wizard Pope, Ian Davin. There's my dogs. I'll leave my dogs up there for a minute. Did he plan to give Pharaoh's family the fungus or was it a happy accident? I Here's my thinking. Peep this, my homies. He didn't mean to. He didn't know he had it. You know, he 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 had the cross cooties. He and his wife, sister wife, and he didn't. I'm mean, you know, 
And part of the deal is whenever you, yeah, every part of the Bible. Yeah, 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 every part. Let me do this right here. Let me do this. Come on, baby. Look down, look down. Don't look him in the eye. There we go. Let's do this one here. We'll watch this. A happy accident, truly, right? For him, for the Pharaoh. Hello, and welcome to The Deadly Atheist. I'm Chris Mallard. Thank you for you joining. Better be the one I want. In this episode of the Evil God Monster of Abraham series, we'll cover Genesis chapter 11 in the Book of Death. In the Book of Death. The chapter in which God confused the languages of men, we get to enjoy the misogynistic lineage from Shem to Abram, and we see the first direct mention of incest oh, in the Bible. Oh, this is a goodie. This Good, is a goodie. wholesome fun for the whole family. You're going to like Stick this. Around. This is my favorite. All right. Get that crap. Just a quick primer about chapter 11 in Genesis. It's broken into three parts. Part one is the story of the city of Babel. Part two is more useless begats running from Shem to Abram. More wasted space as they already covered most of the lineage in the previous chapter. And finally, it closes by giving us our first introduction to Abram. So to part one, throughout my Evil God Monster of Abraham series, I've repeatedly mentioned that there seems to be no culture, music, or beauty of any kind so far in the Bible. No mention of great works of art, acts of kindness, glorious cities, or any measure of something we would know as civilization. In fact, we've already covered 10 chapters of the Bible, and so far we've encountered blood, murder, misogyny, lots of misogyny, animal sacrifices, genocide, and the entire population of the planet apparently still lives in tents. Genocide, the home game. <laughs> but nothing we would consider civilization. Nothing. Now, for the first time in the Bible, we're going to see men come together to build something great and wonderful. Fantastic. The first sign of the greatness of man cities. mentioned in the Bible. Big cities. Now, I already talked about tents, but in verse 3, chapter 11, the humans of earth up their game and start making bricks. They okay, here's a, here's a stupid over, oversimplification of what I think happened. I think most of the people who wrote the Bible, or at least these early parts of the Bible, were desert dwellers who lived out in the desert. And they had penis envy about for the people who lived in the city and they looked the, the people who lived in the city probably looked down on them you know you know you know and these people were like the freaking hillbillies out in the wandering out in the desert and so these people out there didn't like people in the cities they didn't like technology technology's bad it's all stupid you know i don't know that's kind of my thinking and then you'll see that throughout this thing talking about how throughout the early parts of the bible the, it really reads like because Sodom and Gomorrah, whenever they talk about cities, there's usually wickedness. It's wicked within the city, you know? So that's the point I had to make. Thank you for letting me make that point. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. So finally, men are beginning to embrace civilization and increase their standard of living. Yay! But wait, God doesn't see this as good. Now, I thought the reason God didn't like it was because they blasphemed and were thinking they could touch the heavens well, and be like God. Yeah. But nowhere in the text does it say that. Mm -hmm. I checked several versions and the only sin or possibly negative thing I could find was where they said they wanted to make a name for themselves. That's it. Nowhere, so far, does it say making a name for oneself is a bad thing. There's simply no good reason listed in the Bible as to why God would want to scatter people over the earth and confuse their languages. It reads as though God came down, saw that men were working together in peace and harmony, and became offended by their progress. Genesis chapter 11, verses 5-7 through seven. Lost But children. the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if, as one people speak in the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Now, at this point, you'd think he'd be proud. It sounds like he just gave them a huge compliment, mad props and whatnot. When you work together, you can accomplish anything. But let's continue reading because that's not what he meant. The God monster goes on. Nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Together they can do anything, and we can't have that shit. They are doing great, working together in apparent peace and harmony towards a common goal. A true God of peace and love and mercy, I suspect, would appreciate their efforts and applaud them. 
but a narcissistic evil god monster filled with petty hate and rage might not be so pleased. Created by desert dwellers who didn't, you know, yeah, yeah. And of course, you know how the story ends. God scatters people across the whole world and confuses their language, literally to keep them from succeeding. Again, just to kind of drive it in home, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. But we all know what's really going on here. The author of the Bible is merely trying to explain why there are so many different languages and not just a single language. Got it. Cool story, bro. Once again, you've painted your God in the shade of a real dick. It's not a lesson about the humility of man in the story of Babel. It's about the pettiness of God. Part two, the beguiling begats of misogyny. Okay, so in the second part of this chapter, it doesn't actually use the word begat, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shem was the son of Noah, and Shem had a son named Bob, who had many sons and daughters. And Bob had a son named Steve, who had sons and daughters, and Steve's son Hank, etc., etc., etc. Begat, begat, begat. But at least in this lineage, women get some mention when it says a man had sons and daughters. Otherwise, females are once again completely left out. Ten generations of a family line and not a single wife, daughter, or mother is named. A mind-numbingly boring waste of text, space, and time. That's, that's something I want to point out in case you didn't know this about the Bible. Two times in the Bible, it repopulates the earth. And both times it does so without mentioning a single woman. It talks about this dude did this and this dude had this dude and sons and daughters and stuff. You know, so it'll refer, reference them as sons and daughters, but no woman is named outside of Eve throughout all of these lineages from Adam all the way down, all the way. Hank, yeah, Hank's awesome. He's awesome. I like the book of Hank. <laughs> On to part three. We meet the father of the Abrahamic religion and we see direct biological and marital incest in the Bible for the first time. Terah had three sons, Abram, who would later go on to become Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Haran had a son, Lot, then he dies. And then we come to verse 29 of chapter 11 of Genesis. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. She was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Ishka. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nahor's wife is the daughter of Haran? So, so Abram's brother was married to his own niece, the daughter of his other dead brother? Yep. So there you have it. The second marital incest directly stated so far in the Bible. Now, I'm not saying it's the second implied incest in the Bible. If we were talking implied incest, you know, I mean, can you imagine going over to your brother's house? I mean, my man, those daughters are yours. Mm, mm, mm. That's looking good right there. Can you imagine? I mean, that's in the South, yeah, but... You know, there are some people who I think don't like my show because they were watching it in the beginning and they think something like... Uh, I remember it happened it was a long time ago. They were uh, uh, accent shaming. They didn't like that I accented, accent shamed people from the South. I'm like, I'm from the South. I, I get to do that. <laughs> um. Anyway, no goats were harmed. <laughs> Here we go. Incest. We'd need to start with Eve and her sons. Oh, yeah, if yeah. the creation wait, wait, story me... is to be believed, Eve right, stated right, so brother right, was married to his own niece, the daughter of his other dead far. brother. Yep. So there you have it. The second marital incest directly stated so far in the Bible. Now I'm not saying it's the second implied incest in the Bible. If we were talking implied incest, we'd need to start with Eve and her sons. If the creation story is to be believed, either Eve had sex with her sons or Adam and Eve had other daughters with whom Cain and Abel had sex with to initially populate the earth. Either way, incest would need to be involved. Then later, Noah's sons and wives and their children would have had to have been incestuous again in order to repopulate the earth after the flood. All implied incest. But verse 29 specifically tells us the dude married his own niece. Naughty, naughty, naughty. naughty, naughty. So is that bad? Is that incest? Uncle and niece? I mean, even in the South, that'd raise an eyebrow. It too. would. But who, you ask, is the first marital incest directly stated you in the Bible? What's well, Abram and Sarai? They're not kissing cousins or uncle and niece, nothing like that. No, they are brother and sister. Yep, the father of the Abrahamic religion was in an incestuous marriage with his own sister. Twice in the upcoming chapters, Abram, 
or Abraham, being a brave and noble man, a man of honor and strength, will pass off his wife as his sister and give her to other men to save his own hide. Genesis 12 and Genesis chapter 20. But what many don't know is that she really was his sister according to him. The second man he gave his wife to asked him why he would do such a thing. And his response is in Genesis 20 verses 12. Besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my father, though not my mother. And she became my wife. So Abram's brother married his own dead brother's daughter, and Abram married his own sister. This is the man who in later chapters speaks to God and goes on to be the father of the Abrahamic religions. The patriarch of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is literally introduced as an incestuous scumbag from a family of incestuous scumbags. Exactly the kind of craziness you'd expect from the evil god monster of Abraham and its book of death. So what do you think? Did you know Abram and Sarai were both husband and wife and brother and sister? Let me know in the comments below. If you like what I do and you'd like to support my cause, follow the links in the description below to my Patreon and find a tier that works. Hey, hey, Theo, thank you for joining us. For you. Also, I have some wonderful atheist merch. Again, links are in the description below. Thank you for all your help and support. I appreciate it. Thumbs up goes a long way. Remember, spare Abram some goats and give me a thumbs up, a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you and take care. Looks Thank forward. you for watching the show. A special shout out to my gold level Patreon supporters, the Blazing Wizard Pope, Ian Davenport, Cindy. And my dogs. Here's my dog, Sadie, Bailey, Jack and Daisy. And now we also got Ollie. Where's Ollie? Oh, no, he's off somewhere. The only one here is Daisy. Daisy's still here and she's getting all gray. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up the show. Um, as you know, I'm a big dog lover. Actually, they're little, but you know what I mean by big dog lover. Look, she's getting gray. Look how gray she's getting. Oh, my goodness. That's my Bailey. Or Daisy. It's Daisy. Sorry. Um, I'm a dog lover, so if you don't have too many dogs, go get you a dog. Thank you for watching the show. Remember to adopt. Um, go find you. A, you want to see? Okay. All right. Well, come here. Now, you see Sadie. You see Sadie. <sighs> Look at that goodness gracious is that a different puppy dog right there let me go here oh, hi oh my goodness there's my sadie girl hi i'm on my sadie hello guys thank you for watching the show um don't forget to adopt get yourself a good dog dogs are my favorite people if society collapses they become a food source <laughs> <laughs> You guys have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you, 420 Atheist. Oh, guys, and don't forget, I got a, I have a, I'm, I'm running another stream on a different channel. Uh, let me see if the link is still good here. Uh, if you don't mind, at 6 or 8 p.m. Eastern on this other channel, uh, I'm running a new show, a new talk show called Crazy Talk, because, you know, I talk crazy talk all the time. And uh, it's all liberal left-wing nutbagism, not so much uh, atheist, liberal left, but 8 p.m. Eastern, come join me. Uh, otherwise, I just sit there talking to myself for an hour. It's good, though. I use, like, video and stuff, and but I still talk to myself. But, all right, guys, thank you very much. Have a great day.